So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, CAPE, which stands for Cajun Advanced Pico Satellite Experiment. Uh, it's a relatively new CubeSat program at the University of Louisiana. We make a 1U CubeSat. We have launched one already. It was launched in 2007. It, it was uh, active for about a month or so. After that, it died for unknown reasons. And right now, we are working on the second one, which will be CAPE 2. We're trying to do a couple new things and uh, trying to use the lessons learned on the first one to improve it. And uh, one of the key aspects of the design for this one will be the implementation of deployable solar panels. So I'm going to skip all of that. Uh, So I'm going to uh, talk about uh, mainly the mechanical design aspects of CAPE 2 and not more of the electrical side. Uh, so we got together, wrote down what the goals of the mechanical design have to be. And one of the most important ones listed here are that we should be able to deploy the solar panels. And that was one of the challenges we should be able to deploy antennas in orbit, which is key to be able to communicate with the satellite. And we don't really have an active attitude control system because we didn't need one. We don't have an imaging device or anything like that. We decided that uh, we'll be able to do good if we just restrict the motion to rotation about one axis just to ensure that the antennas on the satellite are in a favorable orientation so that we are always able to communicate when it passes over our ground station. So that is uh, the mechanical structure that we came up with. You can see uh, we have these grooves on the four rails in order to make the design modular. What we do is we have four circuit boards inside the satellite and we just uh, we will be able to slide the four circuit boards into these grooves which connect to a motherboard on the back side. And that way, if something goes wrong later on with any one of the boards, we have to open just bo one board on this side and slide out the board that, that goes wrong, do whatever we have to and slide it in back. So that ensures that the design is very modular and we are able to do a lot of things in lesser time in the testing phase. Uh, that's just a representation of what uh, the frame is going to look like. We will probably be uh, expanding the size of those slots in order to support the circuit boards a little better. And I guess we'll be able to see whether this size works or not once we prototype this uh, design and. Uh, see how it works when you put it in a vibration test and, and all. So uh, I had this question. How many of you all know about another team that has developed or is developing a 1U CubeSat that has deployable solar panels on it? So that's about three or four. Uh, now, I guess, uh, I mean, 3U and 2U is very commonly have deployable solar panels. And uh, one use uh, generally have certain constraints, such as like power constraints, because of being small. And uh, like as Kevin said in uh, his uh, uh, presentation, that it's easy to drain the batteries on a one use satellite when you are communicating with it. So uh, we hope to increase the amount of power we generate using four deployable solar panels that have uh, uh, solar cells on both sides, thereby trying to increase the amount of power we generate. Also, it'll sort of be a proof of concept kind of thing because not many 1U CubeSats have actually done this before. And uh, also, we can use the extra power generated to increase the speed of data transfer with the ground station. So. Uh, we, can, we designed this, this simple uh, spring hinge in order to deploy the solar panels. We des designed it according to an off-the-shelf torsion spring that we could buy. And uh, we came up with this little simple mechanical stopping mechanism 
in order to lock this uh, spring at an angle of 135 degrees. Now, uh, we are not certain whether that 135 degree angle is optimum or not, but we will be conducting some tests and it'll be really easy to manipulate that angle later on just by changing the angle in that slot between the two edges that come together. And once we have that appropriate angle, we can just deploy the panels to that specific angle. And that's an extremely simple design. And uh, we just lock it down using uh, the fishing line mechanism, burn it using a resistive element, and deploy it. Uh, so we're going to have four, we thought about having four deployable panels like that, that open on opposite sides. Uh, we have not done any mathematical analysis of whether this will be the most optimum uh, design for maximum exposure or not. But intuitively, this seemed like uh, the best uh, design, also ensuring ease of manufacturability, considering that we don't have an active attitude control system. Because if we have an attitude control system, then you know we can have uh, all four of them on one side, like like the commonly the 2U or the 3U satellites have. Uh, now, uh, on to the antenna deployment system is a very simple uh, antenna deployment system. We, we use four antennas, uh, two uh, six inches long and two 19 inches long, operating at two different frequencies. Uh, antennas will be made of nitinol, which is super elastic. We'll, we'll try and find nitinol that is super elastic at space temperature. And uh, we designed a little casing to uh, case those two uh, antennas on opposite sides of the CubeSat, two at the bottom, two on the top, because uh, the solar panels will be deploying on opposite sides. And uh, a simple plastic leaf to keep them in, and we just uh, lock them down using another fishing line. We burn it off, and the, the antennas deploy. Now, uh, we will be prototyping this casing in uh, the next few months, we are almost done with the design process, moving on into the prototyping phase. And if we see problems with, the with this design, then we'll move on you know, to the more common design of just wrapping the antennas around the CubeSat by making a couple notches on the frame, just on the outside. Another thing that would be worth exploring later on would be to have all four of the antennas deploy. Uh, all four of the solar panels deploy on one side, because uh, we had no idea uh, until a few days back that there's going to be drag in low Earth orbit, and uh, that drag can be used to position the satellite to a certain extent uh, aerodynamically. So that might help, as long as it does not affect. Uh, the amount of exposure and the, the, the benefit of having deploy, deployable panels on the satellite. Uh, we have, a, as I said, very simple attitude control system. We're just two little magnets that form a composite bar magnet through the satellite, which slowly will an align to uh, uh, the Earth's magnetic field, thus uh, restricting uh, the satellite to rotate about the axis of the resultant magnet. And that way, we have four antennas. That way, we can ensure that at least one antenna has an angle of less than 45 degrees with the Earth's surface to ensure that we can communicate with the satellite at all times. And that, that is just an image of, which shows how how it, it aligns. A very simple system using uh, two simple magnets, no active attitude control. Uh, that image uh, uh, is a CAD representation of uh, how the circuit boards will slide in. That is one of the key aspects of the design, too. Uh, the last uh, satellite we made uh, had all four circuit boards stacked on top of one another. And if something went wrong with one of them, they had to take the entire stack out and then put it back together, which took a lot of time, which a lot of satellites still do. We tried, we were trying in to get rid of that problem in the testing phase by just being able to slide uh, any of those circuit boards in and out whenever we want. Also, probably trying to 
keep the circuit boards independent of the position so that way it doesn't matter whether the one on the bottom we take it out and put it on top or we change the positions of all those boards they're still going to work together when connected to the motherboard we might be not be able to move the center board which will be the one that controls the power to the satellite which is going to have the batteries on it so it requires extra space uh, another representation of what the final satellite should look like and uh, I'll show you a video really quick which just represents uh, how the solar panels will open and that's pretty much it we are moving into the prototyping phase we'll be prototyping it this summer and then going back to another design phase to get rid of any any uh, errors any problems if we have and that was kind of a representation the actual deployment process is not going to be that slow it's actually just going to be a one second thing and uh, that's it uh, if you guys have any questions Well, uh, well, the hinges are just uh, custom design. We'll machine them out of aluminum. We designed the hinges according to off-the-shelf torsion springs because making a custom spring is kind of hard and controlling how much torque it's going to offer to the spring hinge. We're just uh, using uh, little springs online, bottom online. Yeah, the smallest possible spring, and we designed the hinge according to that. Yeah. Solid works. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Have you thought of any methods to kind of slow down? Yeah. We we we. Yeah, because uh, we thought that might be a problem if it opens too fast. It might run a risk of breaking. So we've thought about. Uh, having fluid dampers on there but we haven't really found commercially available dampers and uh, so we're gonna test it out without uh, having to manufacture a damper because that's gonna be kinda hard but if we have to we might put in a, a little damping system right right beside the spring that just uh, damps it down to a slow motion Say that again? Yeah, it will. It will. But as I said, we don't have uh, uh, an imaging device or anything. So if you if you uh, look at the four antennas, so still it's going to ensure that at least one antenna is at an angle lesser than 45 degrees, and you don't want to have an antenna pointing straight at the ground station because of the blind spot in the center. from oscillating also? Yeah. No, it's kind of going to be a complex motion uh, oscillatory and spinning at the same time. But uh, we have to do some more tests with that of uh, how big of an amplitude that uh, oscillation has because uh, hopefully it's not going to be too big and it's not going to hinder with the communication. So as long as we are able to communicate, it doesn't matter how much it moves. Yeah. I I have no I have no idea about that at all. Yeah. Well, uh, I I don't know how they do that because I I was just dealing with the mechanical design of the of the satellite. Uh, the electrical team would know that, but they're not here. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Uh, 
What is the what? Oh, the weight of the entire thing. Weight uh, of both uh, the casings with the antennas right now, just by modeling it, is about uh, 40, 40, 45 grams, which is going to vary, you know, in a range of about plus minus 5 grams, let's say, because of manufacturing discrepancies. But it's, it's, we're still well below 1 kilogram, and, I mean, we're, we have a lot of room to deal with what we have to later on. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the uh, the electrical team decided on something, but I'm not sure about that, so I wouldn't want to comment. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, if uh, anybody uh, likes this so much that they would like to fund it or something, they can talk to me afterwards. <laughs> thanks a lot.